With this movie, we get to start a new section on lighting, and I'll argue one of the most important ones, because lighting can really, really make or break a scene. We've kind of looked at it just cursorily when we were doing some other things, but let's get into it in depth right here and look at some of the things we can do with it. I have a scene built up that shows both shiny surfaces, reflective surfaces, earth tone surfaces, skin tones, all that stuff, so that we can see exactly what's going on with the lights when we work with them. If you would like to open the file that I'm working with, go ahead and go to folder 13 and open the file that is 1301, which is what we're starting with. So I've got a little convertible car, some guy waiting around, and some trees and a little bit of grass growing there. Really, really basic scene. It's not supposed to be fine art. So the first light we're going to take a look at is the infinite light. And I want to again call your attention to when you move your cursor around your scene, when we look over in the lower left-hand corner in the layout that I have presented right here, are the light controls. And those dynamically update to give you an idea of what's going on depending on the frame you roll through. Now just as a refresher to go ahead and pick a multi-frame view here, you just come down to the lower right, of the layout window here, and you can choose whichever one you want. Mine are going off the screen, and there's no way for me to fix that, but I happen to have one called Three Ports Big Left going. Well, I need to select it again, so we stay there. Inside of each port, you can change what camera is being utilized, so you can just maneuver around. So I've got the posing camera in one for our general view. This main camera is the one that we'll be doing all our renders from, so we can see exactly what's going on. And something I also want to point out as we get into the lighting is that under the window, we've got an option for a ray traced preview. When you check that off, you get a separate little window that pops up that allows you to just go ahead and quickly do a refresh without having to go to the render room doing an area render. Pretty nice little speedy way to get things handled. So I'll be pulling that up and back as we're working with the lights. Whoops, looks like I added it to the bottom of the screen here and didn't mean to do that. Okay, infinite light, sometimes known as sunlight. Let's go ahead and get that selected right here. I'll highlight that. Let me get into this. I'll just click on the camera name to highlight this field. Lights that are black are turned off in the lighting controls. Lights that are white are turned on. I'll click on that and we see a visual presentation of the light. Now an infinite light is just absolutely massive. Larger than the scene, I always think of it as the sun. So, in fact, let's go ahead and change that under Properties from Light 4 to Sun. Whenever you create a new scene in Poser, it creates a scene with four lights in it. You can rename them as you want. In the Properties palette here, we can start seeing some of the options we have for the lights, whether it's ray traced shadows or depth map shadows. And we'll go into those in a little bit as we move along right here. Right here, we can see we can change any light to a different kind. So you don't need to always insert a new light into the scene. You can go ahead and just pop between these in the Properties palette and change an infinite to a spot or something if you want to. Now, back over in the light controls, we can create new lights here. We can trash lights that exist. And we can go ahead and click this little light bulb, and it pops open this Properties tab over here on the right side to make any changes. The strength of the light is simply controlled by either entering a numeric value when we come over to parameters. We have the intensity at 100%. You can also dynamically grab this little yellow dot here. Well, I didn't want to do that. Let me click on that. There we go. And I can move that around the scene a little bit and make it lighter and darker. So it's just a super fast, easy way to integrate that. To move this light around my scene, for example, if it was sunshine, I can simply click on the light itself and move that, and we see that updating. Shadows update, all that good stuff. So let's talk about shadows for a moment. There are two kinds in Poser, and they're the same for multiple lights here. There are ray traced shadows, and ray traced shadows are a mathematical calculation. The program figures out each bounced ray of light. So that is how reflections are rendered. That's how certain little things called ambient occlusion are rendered and items like that. A shortcut for that that renders faster and doesn't require all the resources of a computer is depth map shadows. Which one's right for your scene? Mm, kind of depends what you're working with. The more detail you have in texture maps like displacement maps or if you're working with strand based hair, Usually switching over to the depth map shadows is better because it renders faster and doesn't put Poser through the mathematical exercises that it does. 
Okay, well, we can see how we can move this around. Let me pull up our little window here and do an auto refresh. It's doing an auto refresh because I have the posing camera activated. If I click in the main camera view, and then we do a refresh. It'll go ahead and give me an idea more so of what's going on. In the window right now, we just have an OpenGL preview, which is just the rendering card in the computer. And this is actually a small little render of what's going on. When we start engaging the features that show reflections and things like that, you'll notice a difference here that you won't see over here because reflections only render with ray traced. Okay, let me get that out of our way right here. Another very important item is that when you're choosing cameras, you can also choose cameras that are the lights themselves. So for a camera view in this frame, and I right clicked to get this contextual menu, I can go ahead and say, well, what camera do I want? As I fly off that, and let me do that a little bit higher to make sure that you can see everything that's going on. Camera view, the main views, we've got front, back, all these before, but then we've got shadow camera lights, one, two, three, and right off the screen is four. So when I look through that, this is actually the one that we renamed Sun right now. It was the fourth one. But we're looking right down on the scene. Infinite lights don't have to be very precise in what they point at, whereas spotlights do and things like that. So working with infinite light, really easy, and you can look through them, and we'll keep going with different lights in our next movie.